you become the one of the best people to do translations, to do interviews, but you've moved on to other things. And um, I like to rewind a little bit and talk about your progression from drinking Dr. Pepper to uh, <laughs> Gigi Chronicle to MLG, OGM, Machinima, and now uh, ESL and progressing through that. Uh, take us through that that journey and your progression. Uh, whew, where to start? I mean, so, Dr. yeah, Dr. Pepper. Well, back then, um, so it wasn't until that day. So people who don't know Dr. Pepper were referring to the Dr. Pepper Ultimate Fan Contest that MLG used to have, uh, and they carried it on in different forms after that year. But that was year 2012, uh, and that's kind of where my career kicked off, so to speak. But until that day, I actually had no idea that I would be translating and interpreting. That was never part of my goal. It was never an option that I had considered. And I was practicing to become a commentator. So I was doing amateur casts. I'd go on Reddit. And every time someone's like, we want to do a community tournament, I'm like, I'll do it. I'll volunteer. I can stream. Uh, you, you don't have to pay. I'll just do it for practice. And that's how I would try to build up my resume. Uh, the Dr. Pepper event, I happened to go to find the MLG headquarters during the Summer Arena. And for those who were watching League of Legends back then, that was the first time that we got to see Korean teams play against American teams. And even some NAEU competition back then was still a little scarce. So uh, Azubu Blaze, back then called Azubu Blaze, now um, they went into CJ Antis eventually. Uh, they came, they swept the tournament. But I wanted, one, I just thought it'd be a cool thing to do, and I lived in Jersey at the time, so I was like, why not make this video and see where it goes and try to enter that contest? And two, I wanted the Korean teams to know that they had people in America watching, and not just me, because I would be watching with other people. And back then, I remember I would go into like IRC chat on Team Liquid, and we'd all watch it together. And it surprised me that people in America were watching this at 5 a.m., and we're all like, what are you having for breakfast? And we're like, let's watch some OGN. And it carried over from the StarCraft day. So I wanted them to know it's still global. It's a newer game, but people here still care. And they have no idea who you are, and they still care. So I want you to know that. Um, succeeded in that message. And it was that day when a slasher actually saw me speaking in Korean to the team. And he asked, oh, are you bilingual? Are you fluent? And that's when it hit me. I was like, oh, I, I am. I <laughs> never really thought about that because I always only used Korean at home. You know, it, it was always separated. And I just said, yeah, yeah, I, I could translate. I mean, I do that all the time for my family. So then the connections were made. Uh, and that sparked me, the conversation with the team, too, helped me realize I wanted to help bridge that gap of hey, Korean, I want Korean players to know that people here care, and I want people in the West to care more. I want them to have a better reason to care other than you're taking all the prize money. You know, I, I want something more to there, for there to be an emotional investment. Whether you see them as a villain or not, uh, there, there's always a bigger story. So that's how the translation portion started. Uh, and then when I went to Korea to OGN, uh, well, before that, so with Gigi Chronicle, I met Monte Cristo during that same event, uh, and I started writing for him, and it, it came about again because I could get that insight into the Korean scene of reading their articles and their community posts and figuring out what they thought of League of Legends at the time. It was still so young. Uh, so we built that relationship starting then. I started writing for GG Chronicle, and it was really fun because I had never done any official capacity of writing, I mean, other than for school. Uh, so it was a fun experiment for me to see how well I could do it on paper versus by speech. Because I'd always done it by speech, whether it's in school, whether it's at church or other communities. Uh, but writing was always my sister's thing. It was, it was not my thing. That was always hers. Uh, so, you know, learned a lot there, too, in terms of that specific skill. And also, how do I portray that, you know, this message of, hey, the Korean scene is also very diverse. It's very energetic. Fast forward a couple months, uh, I get the opportunity to go to OGN in Korea. Um, and back then I had already commentated a little bit for MLG on the side while also interpreting at some of their events. Uh, and going to OGN, that's when it really opened up because OGN had just booted up their global initiative about a year and a half before I joined. Uh, and they were still really, really green from the global perspective. Obviously, infrastructure, Korean broadcast, TV, you know, cable television, everything, all set. But they had no idea what was going on. They, they didn't really know how Twitch worked. They didn't really get Twitch. They didn't really understand why people were watching. And they, they were just curious because they were like, we've been watching for 10 years, but why, you know, why is Europe and America watching now? Like what, what changed? How did that change? And uh, that's what I think all three of us at that time, Monty, Doa, and myself were there to help them understand was here, let us show you why they care. Because we just came from being those fans into those commentators or other uh, roles that we played. Uh, so 
I became a jack of all trades for <laughs> two years. Um, you know, I was a standby commentator for whenever Montindoa, you know, might be sick or if they really needed a, a vacation or something like that. And then still interpreting uh, for all the interviews. And and that was the kicker, right? Because OGN just didn't have a solid translator that they could rely on. And that was the biggest thing to now connect outside of commentary. Because Montindoa had the commentary pat down. But as soon as it went to the interview, it just, you didn't know what to do. So uh, helped bridge that gap. And then trying to figure out um, how do you just better connect with the community overall? And introducing things like uh, Twitter was not that big in Korea at the time. They were still very Facebook-centric. Uh, now it's changed to, I think, a more even balance, even in Korea. But Twitter at the time was just taking off. And you know the biggest stars would use it, uh, but they didn't quite use it as much as uh, people in the West did. So helping them understand, like, you got to build this opportunity. And how do you do that? you got to be consistent. It's about knowing what they say. It's about reading, you know, the community posts, whether it's Reddit or other forms. Get get the memes, get the jokes, you know, be in on that so that when you have that spark, you can connect immediately with, oh, yeah, like, this connects with that joke or that previous match or that match that happened in America that has nothing to do with the Korean team, but maybe it's the same team comp. you got to be in tune with that. And so I spent, yeah, that year and a half, two years, uh, focusing a lot on that. About a year through, uh, I felt that I really wanted to focus on one avenue a little bit more, no matter which it became. And after some discussion with the people at OGN, we decided, okay, commentary it is, and commentary and uh, you know interviewing and translating, so on stage work. Uh, and I, that became the path just because I think it was the most practical on all fronts. So we stayed with that, and that's when I made the decision to stay in the scene and not go back to school.